earlier on, or yesterday, rather, rearrested the convener of Omoyele Shuware, convener of a revolutionary protest. And with me to discuss this matter is Bernard Oniga, a lawyer, and to give more perspectives on this matter. Good to have you My on pleasure. TVC News. So there had been varied reactions following what happened yesterday, especially the arrest of Shuware in court in the court while the proceedings were going on. Yeah. Many have condemned it, asking the president to do the needful. But what are your thoughts, first off, on what happened, what transpired, and what should be done in this regard? Very beautiful question. Um, I would say that what happened yesterday was quite sad and um, it will go down in memory, though negatively and in history, in the annals of democracy, not just in Nigeria, but all over the world. This is a democratic governance, or government rather, and it operates by principle of rule of law, which also goes by the principle of separation of powers. You know, and so, and the president is the head of the executive. So people must understand why we keep calling on President Muhammad Buhari to take steps in situations like this. However, let me address the Illegality, illegal actions of the DSS yesterday, which um, is nothing short of a desecration of the holy and the sanctimonious temple of justice. The court, it is said to be the last hope of the common man and for everybody. And I tell people who desecrate the same temple that someday and at some point in your life or in your career, you would also need the courts. And so the court is there to assist and to be of benefit to every one of us. And so there is no need. You might be president today and you could desecrate the court. Tomorrow, you might need the same courts to enforce your fundamental rights. That is the reason why all over the world, the courts and the legislative chambers are taken very seriously. Um, so the actions of the DSS are highly regrettable. And if the president does not come up to issue a statement and take deliberate actions vis-a-vis -vis suspending the director of DSS, setting up a panel of inquiry to really understand what happened, who gave the orders, what was the rationale for the order, and making the process as transparent and as open as possible for all of us to see, and telling us that he is not in support of it and he will never be in support of such actions, then we will begin to take him seriously as a truly repentant Democrat. However, what President Muhammadu Buhari, the re and I have said the reason why we keep mentioning his name, it is because he is the head and the leader of the executive arm of government, and the DSS is under him. He is the chief security officer, and the reason, and it is also the law that empowers the DSS. So the DSS should realize that the guns in which they use in harassing and intimidating the everyday Nigerian was given to them by Nigerians, and it is also a creation of the law. There are agencies that don't carry arms. So what if tomorrow the, 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 the legislature says, oh, don't carry arms anymore because you are constituting nuisance to society? We can actually take those arms from them if we have a functional democracy. And like I said, if President Muhammad Bukhari fails to take the steps which I have said, it will go down in the annals of democracy and to remain a scar in the annals of democracy, not just in Nigeria. And aside from being a scar, on the annals of history and our annals of history what do you think we can do to correct this because aside from the government or aside from the president uh, you know uh, uh, calling for the dismissal of the dss boss what other options do you think is available if the president decides not to do what we are asking very well um the courts also have a very fundamental role to play the courts, that is what happened is contempt before the court, while the court was sitting. Let me tell you, what happened yesterday is no different from physically slapping a judge. It was a slap, not just on Justice Ujom, Ijoma Ujuku, but it was a slap on the Chief Justice of Nigeria. It was a slap on the, the Attorney General of the Federation. It is a slap on, let me say this clearly, and I, would, I hope he would hear, on the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who has attained the topmost echelon in legal practice in Nigeria, and he is seen at his level to be the custodian of the law in that regard, in quote, to protect the law wherever he finds himself. And so the, 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 the legislation have a role to play. The Senate and the House of Reps, they do have a critical role to play. If they do not know, they should realize and understand that now. And by and what, what should they do in this case? Of, of course, they need, to, they, need, they need to invite the director of DSS for, for, for questioning, and they need to also propose to the president to undertake certain measures if he sumoto refuses to do so. And also the court, Justice Joma's court, that was contempt before the court, can make an order for the director of um, state safe services to appear before it. It can also make an order for those officials of the DSS that carried that sacrilegious act in the holy temple of justice to be brought before it and to answer questions. And they have no reason not to serve very interesting jail terms, if you ask me, right. at the end of the day. So and we have a lot of options, mm. and I hope that 
all the parties concerned, especially the various arms of government, sees this explore all, uh, yeah, explore all of these options. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, this even goes down to the root of the survival of our democracy. All right, and that's a fine place to leave it right now. Bernard Oniga, legal practitioner, thanks a lot. My pleasure.